then he turns to them. After he talked to Mother Nature, he talks to his disciples. He said, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? And I would encourage you to answer that question for yourself. As you look at the wind and the waves in your life, ask yourself, why am I afraid? What am I scared of? What were the disciples scared of? They were scared that they were going to die. Then he says this, do you still have no faith? Do you have no faith? 41, the disciples were absolutely terrified. Now, here, I don't know if they're terrified. I think that they're no longer terrified of the storm. They're terrified of the guy who has the power to calm the storm. Wow. Who is this man, they they asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. He can turn off the wind and the waves. Who is this man? A few weeks ago, we looked at the scripture when Jesus cast some demons out of a dude. That was intense. If you missed that sermon, you can listen back to that online. And, and we saw how these demons, they bowed before Jesus. They pled with Jesus not to destroy them or send them to hell. And they fleed at his command. They were gone and destroyed. Who is this guy? That even the wind and the waves obey him. Can you, with your voice or with your human capabilities, stop a tornado or a hurricane or a lava flow or an earthquake or the rain or the wind or the sun or a a meteor or an asteroid? Nope, we can't. But Jesus can. He's not some regular dude. He's not Buddha or Muhammad or Joseph Smith. None of them can do anything like this. Only Jesus. Who have we ever been taught about who could control the climate? No one. No one. How can Jesus do this? Colossians 1 says this. Jesus existed before anything was created. Before anything was created, he was there. And he is supreme over all creation. He is above all creation. That's why creation listens to him and obeys him because he is above creation. For through Jesus, God created everything. In the heavenly realms and on earth, He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones and kingdoms and rulers and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. That's why he can rebuke the wind and the waves. That's why the powers in the unseen world respond to him, bow down to him, flee from him. Because through him, everything was created, and in him, everything holds together. And this story that we have is not one person's story. This story of Jesus calming the the storm, is we're given three different accounts of this. Three different accounts were given of Jesus calming the storm. Matthew, who was there on the boat, Mark, who was a close friend with Peter, who was there on the boat. Luke, a physician, who heard the stories from many people and went back and interviewed people, researched the claims, recorded the testimony in this historical account. Three people telling us that Jesus 
can turn off the storms. A couple chapters later, Mark chapter 6, three different guys again, except this time we add John. And Luke doesn't record this story, but John does. John, who was there, Mark, Peter's friend, Matthew, who was there, says, Jesus told us to go on ahead of him. So this time, we got in the boat alone, and we start to paddle, but we we didn't make any headway. We're out in the Sea of Galilee, and the, the, the waves, again, were coming up, and we were rowing and rowing, and we couldn't get anywhere. And this is the, th- the fourth watch of the night between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. We're struggling in the water. And all of a sudden, they look out and see what they think is a ghost coming out in the water, walking on top of the water. It's probably about 80 feet deep. And here comes this person who's walking towards them. It's not possible. It's not possible for a human being to walk on water. It defies nature. It defies science. And Jesus can do that. Jesus can do that. Why? Because he is supreme over creation. He isn't just human. He is also God and he has supernatural abilities. That's why he could heal people. That's why he restored sight to the blind and healed the leper and the paralyzed who he touched could walk and he raised people from the dead. Not some ordinary man, not just some religious teacher, but the son of God, the miracle worker. And as we see Jesus turn off, the, <clears throat> turn off the storm, sometimes we think about the storm in our life and we wonder why he doesn't turn off our storm. Jesus, if you're supreme and you can turn off the storm, you can bring the, the waves to calm, the rain cease, the lightning and thunder no longer. Why don't you do it in my life? Why doesn't he stop tragedy, disease, and death? The world that we live in is permeated by sin. And sin brought destruction, brought devastation, disease, Death, violence, pain, and war. That's what sin brought. And it continues to bring today. Sin brings this awful, awful stuff. And God can turn it off. He can end it. And the good news is, one day he will. But not yet. Why not yet? Why, God, are you letting this to continue to happen? Why are you letting tragedy happen? Because as soon as he stops it, as soon as he eliminates sin, there will be no more time left for people to place their faith and trust in him. See, Jesus is coming back, and when he does, it's over. Those who have trusted in him will go to be with him forever. Those who haven't will go away from him to hell. And so he hasn't stopped the storms yet in life because he wants more people to repent and come to faith in him. He wants more people in heaven. More of our family and friends and coworkers and neighbors. And he said, he said, you know what? In this world, you will have trouble. In this world, you're going to have trouble. COVID. We thought it was just going to be short. Three weeks, this thing's over. One year, 18 months. Now we're like, this ain't ever over. 
And you know what? Another COVID will come. It'll probably be worse. It's good news, isn't it? <laughs> the storms are coming. In this world, you will have trouble. But he says, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And this is so powerful. I love this. And I've shared this before and I'll share it again. You know why Jesus is sleeping? I brought some pillows here. You know why Jesus, I didn't, the worship team didn't like how I put these out here. They're like, you're just like ruining the stage. Got some pillows here. You know why Jesus is, is sleeping? He's got his head on a cushion. You know why he's, he's not scared? It's because he knows that the boat gets to the other side of the lake. He knows that the boat gets to the other side of the lake and they don't die. Hey guys, a storm's coming. It's going to be really bad, but just so you know, we're going to get through it. It might last, last a half hour. It might last an hour, three hours, five hours, six hours. But we're going to get to the other side and we're going to be safe. Hey Jesus, why don't you just tell us that? Like, it'd be a lot easier to know that we're not going to die. But instead, Jesus is just chilling. Just relaxing. Jesus is not scared because he knows that the boat gets to the other side. They live. They get there safely. Just a little terrified. Just a little story to tell. And you might think... Hey, Jeff, you know, I, I like your story about your trip to the ER, this stuff. That's great. Good, good illustration there. That was terrible. That was horrible. I'm still reeling from that. Not too excited about that. A little bitter. <laughs> but in your life, you might say, hey, my story doesn't have an ending. Like, like, what does people do who, say, for instance, lost a child? How does that boat get to the other side? Or lost a loved one? How does that end? There's no bringing them back. I heard a story of a child who was dying. They were in the hospital. They only had a few days to live. And they were... Believers and their parents were trying to tell the child about heaven. They said, hey, hey, son or daughter or whatever it was, here's what it's going to be like. They sent the child into the next room. It was a joining room. Sent him in the next room. So this is going to be, when you pass, you're going to go here to be with the Lord. And then just, they waited just a little bit. And then mom and dad came in and joined the child in the room. Said, you'll be there with the Lord, but in a little bit, we'll come and join you. That's how the boat gets the other side. Said, even in the worst of tragedies, that Jesus comes back. And he comes again to turn off the storm. And if we have an eternal perspective, if we see the world through the, the truth and through the scriptures, we understand that even though we may lose our life here, which we all will, there is a future for everyone who trusts in Jesus. There's heaven that we have the opportunity to spend eternity with all those who trust in Christ. I've lost th three of my grandparents. My fourth final grandparent that I have living is in his 90s. He was here just a couple weeks ago. And he, he probably won't live that much longer. At best, eight, nine more years. Could die any moment. All four grandparents will be gone. My parents, eventually one day, they'll be gone. But you know what? They all know the Lord. And I will spend eternity with every single one of them. 
So even though that I lose them, the boat will get to the other side. And so I don't have to worry. I can trust in Jesus. I can trust in him. That our time here is short. That the storm will end. And I can grab a pillow and rest in the Lord. Instead of trying to control everything myself. One last illustration to to illustrate this. Imagine you're taking a young child through a haunted house, okay? Haunted house is scary, right? Got all these people dressed all zombie-ish. It's frightening for a kid. Bring your kid through the scariest haunted house. You You take their hand and you walk them through. So don't worry. No one's gonna hurt you. We're going to get through. We're going to get to the end. There is an end. And you walk them right through the end. As we walk through life, it's scary. There's times we get injured and hurt. There's loss. There's disease. But we'll get through. And God will walk us through those scary times. And when we get to the end, when he shuts off the storm for one last time, we get to celebrate. No more sickness, no more disease, no more pain, no, no more crying, no more death. For he is making all things new. It's a bumpy road and bad things happen, but God can bring us through anything.